everyone. Thank you for coming. And uh, as we start, let us uh, turn our hymnal to hymn number 526. Oh, we changed the song to five two six. Four two two. Four two two na lang. Oh. 
let's go. Let's turn our him now to this is be like Jesus. Okay, sorry. Peace, love that makes us happy. Five, seven, nine. Opening song is Be Like Jesus. Can everybody stand with us, please? Three one one. Three one one.
Let's bow our heads for prayer. At the start of your Sabbath day, O oh Lord, we come before you as your sons and daughters that you have adopted, you have redeemed, you have created to be above all creation here on earth. You have bestowed us with such a lofty position among creation. But now we find ourselves struggling because of sin. O oh Lord, may it be at this day of rest that we can unburden ourselves of sin and lay it at the foot of the cross. O oh Lord, be with each heart at this moment as we surrender ourselves to you. May it be that you will anoint the lips of our speaker, that we will provide grace and mercy so that all will be filled and will experience growth in the spirit. Be with our members and our visitors alike that we may enjoy the fellowship and this time with you and with each other, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Church. Welcome in our BISPER meeting this evening. The host of our program are the members of the North Shore Church Plan. And every third month of the quarter and the third Friday, North Shore Church Plant is the one assigned. So thank you for leading in our pianist, Brother Renz, in our chorister, Brother Bob and Sister Merlin, our opening prayer, Brother Linson, and of course, God's messenger for us tonight, you know him, we know him already because he's been a uh, pastoring of this church before. And now he is a senior pastor of Surrey Filipino, Vancouver Filipino, North Shore Church Plant, and Agape Church Plant. Never be Filipino, yeah. In Victoria and all over the BC conference with the Filipino congregations. For the sake of our visitor, he is our senior pastor, Pastor Levi Estores. And we'd like to welcome, of course, our visitor for us tonight. She will be the one who will give the special number. She is a visitor, really, because she, she just arrived last Wednesday. And she will go back to Philippines on Monday. She's just a visitor, just to visit us here and to attend the seminar because she is the head in the department of dentistry in our sanitarium in Mamsi in Pasay. She will give us the special number, Dr. Jean Bautista. If you know Pastor Rodolfo Bautista Jr., she is the half, <laughs> the bitter half. Uh, the wife, the only wife of Pastor John Bautista. Before Pastor Levi gave us the message, shall we hear now the message and song through Sister Jean Bautista. Thank you and happy Sabbath. This quiet place with you, I bow before your throne. I dare to 
deepest part of me to you and you alone. I keep no secrets for there is no thoughts you might not know. Take the book. Sorry. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat> This quiet place with you, I bow before your throne. I bear the deepest part of me to you and you alone. I keep no secrets, for there is no thoughts you might not know. I give my past and all the rest to you, I lay them down. yours completely I serve you only with all my heart you faithfully supply my needs according your plan. So help me, Lord, to seek your face before I seek your hand. And trust you know what's best for me that I may understand. And follow With all my heart, I want to love you, Lord, and lead my life each day to know you more. All that is in me is yours completely. I serve you only. With all my heart. With all my Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jean, for reminding us today that uh, we need to serve the Lord with all our heart. God is not happy with uh, that. God is not happy with our partial obedience or partial commitment. He wants us to serve Him and to love Him always with all our hearts. How are you today? Personally, I have a mixed feeling today. Early in the morning, I was so happy because somebody knocked at our door and delivered my Canadian passport. <laughs> my wife received her last, I mean, the, yesterday. But then after lunch, uh, 
my heart was sinking as we saw the the Colomon family uh, parting from our loved one, from their loved one. So sad. So I still cannot detach myself from the sad picture of what happened today and of course last night during our memorial service. But life is like that, right? We always uh, are aware that uh, one of the greatest sting of sin that, is, uh, that uh, has been brought to this world because of our first parents. When our first parents ventured into the forbidden ground, of course, is death. Death is so cruel and uh, it always pains our heart, gives us the greatest uh, feeling of separation when death comes to our family, also to our church family. Well, this evening I have uh, chosen to share to you, uh, by the way, before I will share to you some Bible highlights, I'd like to express my thanks to, I would like to convey the thanks of uh, Victoria Pilkan to the Vancouver Filipino Church for your wholehearted support to them when they were struggling. Remember three years ago when I first visited there and uh, I had the blessing of the board to assist them and to help them when I first um, came to join them, there were only eight of us, right? But now if you go to uh, Victoria Filcan, more than 40 people, sometimes, uh, in fact, my, my the other visit, uh, we were almost 100. <laughs> but last Saturday, when we went, last the other Saturday when we went there, my wife and I went there, more than uh, 60 of us uh, were there. More Filipinos have moved from other provinces, and uh, many Filipinos also that uh, uh, were attending the English churches scattered before they started to go back and uh, try to strengthen the Filipino group in Victoria. And uh, because the English church is moving to a new starting, uh, I think starting next month, then the, the English church will move to a new place, to the academy. They sold their property for tr more than three million. And so there will be no uh, seven identities presence in the city of Victoria. They will be in the outskirts already. So the, the rest of the Filipinos would love to stay, would like to stay in the city, and so it, they will be staying with our Victoria Pilkan. So those are some of the changes that you can expect, and when you visit Victoria Pilkan, Victoria Pilkan, those are the changes that you will know. We are happy that the Lord have sent some families from Edmonton, nurses particularly who, will be, uh, who were called to uh, work in Victoria are now strengthening the congregation there in, uh, uh, in our struggling before, a struggling uh, Filipino congregation in Victoria. So thanks for your support, especially the church board who are really acted that we will send our leaders, sometimes our many of our members to assist them while they were struggling there. And uh, we're glad also for the leadership of uh, Brother Judy Malabanan, our FAABBC uh, president, present president for uh, arranging different churches to uh, assist our, our church there in Victoria. So again, thank you everyone. Thank you for your wholehearted support. This evening I'd like to invite you to please open your Bibles with me to Philippians chapter 4, 11 to 13. Philippians chapter 4, 11 to 13. <clears throat> This was Paul's uh, response to the Philippians when he was in prison and uh, the brethren sent some help to him. And so this uh, is the statement that, uh, is, uh, that I'd like to share to you this evening. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. Okay, I shall be reading from my uh, New International Version Bible. Whatever version you have there, take a look at it and... Let's uh, glean some wonderful lessons from Paul's uh, admonition to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, 11 to 13. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Verse 12. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what, is, what it is to, be, to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, 
whether living in plenty or in want. Verse 13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Paul is aware that even Christian hearts can be plagued with discontentment. Our world today, our materialistic world today, is plagued with this kind of, shall we say, spiritual disease, the spirit of discontentment. Paul also recognized that as human beings, we were not born to be contented. In fact, it is the otherwise. Babies want more milk, right? Want more attention, want more hugs, want more cuddling, even at their birth. They, we seem to be born with the spirit already of what? Discontentment. Christians who have Straight hairs, they would like their hair to be curly. Or those of us who have uh, tall noses, we would like it to be a little bit lower. Right? Those of us who have shorter eyelashes, we want to be, they will make it a little bit longer, right? So those of us who are taller, we would like, I, I wish my height is like her, not really so tall, but. Those of us who are shorter, we would like our height to be taller. It seems to me that uh, uh, human beings are plagued with this spirit of discontentment. And so uh, I think Paul here has uh, a message for all of us, knowing that according to him, our life is not constant. There are times when we are in need. There are times when we are what? In plenty. That means our circumstances are not always the same. Our life sometimes is favorable. Our, the circumstances in our lives sometimes are favorable. At times, they are unfavorable. But Paul's concern is that how can Christians learn to be contented? Whether in hours of plenty or in hours of need. According to Paul, I think, we need education because Paul said, I have learned. Meaning to say, he has not, in the past, he was not also what? A contented person. Contentment is a process to him and he has learned to what? To have it. Now, uh, I would like to share to you some reasons why, uh, why we are sometimes, even as Christians, cherish discontentment. First reason is because of our unfulfilled expectations, right? Um, did you find that uh, true? Sometimes we are discontented with even with uh, with our life part, with, with our spouse. Sometimes uh, that feeling of discontentment comes probably because our expectation is different, right? We are discontented with the performance of our children. Or uh, probably our uh, our job, and many other areas of life, because we expect differently, and we are brought to a reality of a different uh, situation or circumstance. So, our unfulfilled expectations sometimes will lead us into what discontentment. So it's nice not to expect too much. Or probably to expect uh, already that life will, brings us, will bring us sometimes favorable and unfavorable circumstances. In that way, our mind is conditioned to what? To be contented when adverse circumstances will come on our way. So the first, the first reason why we are discontented as Christians is because we have what? Unfulfilled expectations. Second. The reason why we become discontented is because sometimes we focus on the external instead of on the what? The internal. We seem to be conscious of our ex external beauties, external standing. And we do not focus more on the internal. Therefore, we, 
said, why is it my face is, is not as good as like her face or mine? My hairstyle is not good as her hairstyle, you know? So when we focus on the external, uh, at times we will be tempted to be discontented. But God would like us to be what? To be focused on the internal. For Samuel said, recorded the book of Samuel tells us that God looketh not on the what? On the outside, but on the what? On the inside. Our external beauty changes with the passing seasons, except in the heart where true beauty remains, right? And that is what God would like us to focus on, the beauty that is inside. The character that is inside is what matters most. The external are just what? Temporary. They may change. As we age, our beauty may change. Our physical feature may change. But there is a beauty that never changes, and that beauty is inside our hearts. That should be our focus every day. Our focus of cultivation is our internal, internal uh, beauty and internal uh, status, not on the external. And lastly, the, one of the reasons why we become con discontented is because we compare ourselves with others. Every time you compare, every time I compare myself with others, I always realize that I come short. Did you notice that? If I compare myself to other pastors, to other ministers, I would always say, oh, how I wish I am like him. How I wish I am like her, right? Because every time you compare yourself with others, remember this, you always come short. And so it's not good to be what? It's not good to compare ourselves with others. Rather, we must daily compare ourselves with Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible tells us, looking unto Jesus, the what? The author and the finisher of our faith. Never should I, never should you be tempted to compare yourself with your fellow human, your fellow mortals, because... That is not what God wants us to be. God created us unique, right? Completely different from each other. God created us so different from each other because God wants it so. He wants, he is a God of variety. He gives us different talents. He gives us, gives us different features. He gives us different opportunities. He gives us different beauties because God is what? God is a God of variety. It is not healthy to compare ourselves with others. You know, uh, I, I don't know if I have mentioned this to you. Uh, last year, uh, both the houses on our left and on our side were, destro were destroyed and rebuilt. So nice and so beautiful. So that our house looks like already a washroom uh, compared to those two big houses. <laughs> both on our left and on our side. And one day as I was entering my gate at the back, back alley, a spirit of discontentment crept into my heart by Elder Amado. And I said, oh, maybe someday I need also to rebuild my house. Maybe I have to borrow more money in the bank and rebuild my house. But later on, as I closed the door of my car, I said, I realized, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't have that money. Please. Erase this discontentment in my heart. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. To Kayo Levi, I prayed, I whispered to God and said, Lord, please erase this what? Delete this discontentment in my heart's programming, in my mind. Because it's not good. It's not good to be discontented. And so when we compare ourselves with others, it breeds discontentment. Rather, look at your face every day and tell God, God, thank you so much. You have created me so beautifully. You have put me in a very nice circumstance. I have no reason, no reason to complain. Amen? Yes, we have some ups and downs in life. But if we, you know, 
One time I was uh, looking at the mirror and I said, Lord, why am I so thin? Why am I not so? I, I wish my body is bigger than compared to others. And then that day I went to visit uh, a friend in the hospital. And I saw people there grow uh, in the hospital different situations. You know, when you go to the hospital and see so many sick people of different nature. I said, Lord, thank you very much. Although I'm thin, I'm healthy, right? <laughs> so I need that antidote on me. Just to, that my antidote was just to go to the hospital so that, that the spirit of discontentment can be what? Can be lost in my heart. Brethren, we need to accept who we are. And we need to appreciate God for who we are. And God's purpose for each of us. For us to cherish that spirit of what? Contentment. By the way, you will never and I will never be able to achieve contentment. Because contentment is a gift, by the way. It is not earned. It is not learned. It is a gift from God. Because according to Paul in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ. My education, my training at Mountain View College, my master's degree at AUP cannot help me to be a pastor with a spirit of contentment. My Bible says it's only through Christ. And so contentment can only be achieved when a Christian, when a Christian met God and met Christ. It is only in Christ that we can have what? True contentment in life. The woman at the well, remember, the woman at the well have discovered the true source of contentment and satisfaction. Remember, every day she was there, she would get water, but every day she would get what? Thirsty. In the same manner, in the same manner, when we do our human routine of acquiring this and that. Uh, and uh, without considering God, of course what? We will never be satisfied in life. By the way, in some parts of the world, some people are satisfied with their three pairs of shoes. But in some homes, Canadian homes that I have visited, some are not contented with their three dozen pair of shoes. So where will contentment end? Right? Where will contentment end? It has no end unless at one junction of our lives we met God, Jesus, and say, Lord, I'm fine. I'm happy. This is enough for me. I will just live a simple life that others may simply live. The rest of my resources, I can channel it to be a blessing to others. Help me by your grace to be contented. I cannot speak more, but Paul, I think, has spoken enough for us to learn. And so this evening, as we go home, let us pray to the Lord and say, Lord, teach me to have an encounter with you every day so that in my journey towards your kingdom, I will discover one of the greatest gifts of God to humankind, and that is the gift of contentment. May God bless us tonight, is my prayer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Istoris. And while we are having our closing song, we I am inviting all the North Shore members to please join us in our closing song. This will serve as, a, as our closing song tonight.
we will request everybody to sing with us in the last stanza. we pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we retrace our way back home and look at our garage, our closet, our shoe rack, we focus our thought, O oh Lord, to some places where people are displaced, homeless, in refugee camps, those who have no homeless or their homes were destroyed by natural and man-made calamities and teach us, O oh Lord, to be contented, to learn to share what we have because it is only when we think of others in the eyes of God that we can have the true spirit of contentment. Thank you very much.
for this blessed Sabbath that we are enjoying because of your grace. Send us home with your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray.